If you are a small team, a startup getting to product market fit, pre-PMF, you don't have a lot of traffic, or if you're trying to scale, you're even post-PMF, but you still have manageable amount of traffic, not a lot, not a lot of bandwidth is going on. I think this infrastructure, this scalability, is good for you. If you're a backend developer, you should watch this video. I'm gonna tell you a few tips and tricks which are very practical, which you should be implementing in your code base, in your infrastructure, in your application layer to scale your backend to hundreds of thousands of concurrent users, depending on what your application is using and not crash under heavy load. So how does that happen? Let's take a look in this video. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. All right, so people usually talk about scaling their websites or their companies or whatever, but on a technical sense, all you have to do is always make sure that your backends are scalable. Your front ends never really come into the picture because front ends are fundamentally scalable, right? If you think about it, if your backend already has delivered something to the client, the client is a small computer which has a small computation to do but the server right here is the one which is bombarded by tens of thousands of computers simultaneously right so we are not going to be talking about how you write a good html css javascript thing because that's easy let's talk about the difficult part how do you scale this guy right here so that it can handle a lot of connections simultaneously. Okay, so the first thing you have to realize is that you always want to scale your backends horizontally, right? Whenever you're adding a capacity, that should be a new server, right? It should not be vertical scaling because vertical scaling has physical limits. You cannot go beyond a certain number of ramps and processing power and so on. But right here, when you scale horizontally in terms of creating more and more servers, you can assign them with more and more clients. So the clients per server actually comes down and that is all that matters right this is a kind of a value which you want to control you don't want to control the number of clients obviously because more the better but you want to increase the server so that this ratio comes down now this is the very fundamental part of backend scaling but the fact that you have to do this gives you a few constraints to play with the first constraint here is that your code should be stateless the application layer of your backend which is the layer, the business layer, which your clients interact with, the first layer, which is running on this backend as a node process, as a Python process, as a Java process, as any process, that process could not contain state. By state, what I mean is let's say you are doing some sort of authentication and you are storing the connected clients or clients which are last active in an array inside of your code, right? This is a disaster because if you do horizontal scaling, this server would create a fresh copy and the way scaling works, these servers are assigned randomly to clients depending on what the load is currently. And if you are assigning a wrong server to the wrong client every single time, your client would just have a lot of hard time in terms of authenticating properly. So for example, if you are using some sort of authentication and matching it with a key value inside local state, that's wrong. You have to move your state somewhere central right now what that central could be that central could be a redis store or that central could be a actual database like mongodb or mysql so once you do that you have to just make sure that this horizontal scalability is present now this is easier in some cases if you're using for example lambdas at aws lambdas can automatically horizontally scale till the limit you have specified right and it will just automatically shrink as well and you will only pay the cost while your code is executing so that's the beautiful part you can also do this manually if you're using for example aws auto scaling groups and stuff where you're running eight ec2 instances and doing it yourself the auto scaling group part would probably be cheaper for you if you receive a lot of traffic but for anything which is like a few thousand users to a few ten thousand users i think just doing going the lambda route is better all right so your application layer now is scalable of course thanks to lambdas and horizontal scaling and stateless code. But what about this thing where you move the central dependency, right? The Redis and MongoDB, let's assume, this is still vulnerable, right? So one thing right here in terms of databases, let's talk about MongoDB first, is that you can use a distributed database. Now this is something which is getting popular these days a bit. So for example, FaunaDB, these databases are I think planet scale db is also one one i have heard about i haven't really used it 
but planet scale database. These sort of databases, what they do is they expose your database over an HTTP server and they manage the internal scaling and read writes and everything on their own. Now with databases, the interesting part is that even though you can scale the compute all over the world, if you want to scale the database all over the world, you will lose out on things like strong consistency. If you want strong consistency, then you would lose out on things like performance. So it's a close competition between performance and consistency and what should come before, what you should op optimize for. But the idea is that you should not really think a lot about, at least in the initial stages, as long as you're picking a scalable system. So Fauna DB, Planet Scale DB, these are kind of some new choices which might not be very applicable for companies who already have existing databases. Uh, but even for MongoDB and MySQL or you know anything which, which requires some SQL based database, I think there are options where you can use managed version of those databases. For example, MongoDB has an Atlas as a database, which is beautiful in the sense that you just boot up that MongoDB instance on the Atlas. It costs you a lot, like it starts with a $60 per month plan, which is which is production grade. But I mean, it's worth it because you don't have the headache to manage all the backups and making sure that your databases are healthy, your cluster is healthy and so on. So managed database is also a great option. AWS provides a lot of services around this as well. Aurora DB, DynamoDB and so on. So you can pretty much just go ahead and stick with some managed database as well to scale this. And for Redis as well, again, I would stick with the managed database thing where you have Elasticash and stuff which you control with the GUI. I mean, the fact is that you can hypothetically and technically, not really hypothetically, you can create these managed services on your own, but it's just not worth your developer time, right? Your developer time is more suited on this application layer right here, writing the actual code for this, instead of worrying about the infrastructure scaling, the management and so on. So this is the boring part, and this would actually reduce a lot of cost. It will actually make sense for you when you are a huge company, right? When you are actually trying to just optimize a lot of cost factors and so on. If you are a small team, a startup getting to product market fit, pre-PMF, you don't have a lot of traffic, or if you're trying to scale, you are even post-PMF, but you still have manageable amount of traffic, not a lot, not a lot of bandwidth is going on. I think this infrastructure, this scalability is good for you. Then another tip, which I have is always try to use managed, like we all already discussed, managed database, but also try to use managed services. For example, always prefer S3 over storing files on your own, right? Always try to prefer lambdas, I would say, compared to just building your own upscaling, downscaling service, or even using, I mean, AWS obviously provides things like Fargate for Dockers and stuff, but try to use managed services. They make your task a bit easier. And if it is a cheaper service, then it is most likely a lot scalable and if it is cheaper and managed it's most likely probably like built for scale right so yeah these were my two three tips two three important things you should keep in mind when you're trying to design a backend that needs to be scaled the stateless part is super important once you get that that management that managed services part is relatively easier right but your application layer should be stateless for the reasons mentioned earlier so that is it for this video i hope you learned something new about backend scaling and this stuff even if you don't have a lot of traffic right now to scale it's always nice to know about how other companies or other startups are doing it that's all for this video if you liked it make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel and comment down below that really helps thank you so much for watching and i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of code Dump's discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching